the Going to College Education Podcast from the Irish Independent in association with Quality and Qualifications Ireland, QQI, promoting quality and accountability in Irish education and training. Welcome along to the Irish Independent and Independent.ie Going to College Podcast 2020. This is one of four podcasts being recorded over the next few weeks, which will cover the Leaving Cert results, CAO offers and the college experience during COVID. I'm your moderator, Sinead Ryan, and each time I'll be joined by an expert panel as we navigate what can be a complex and confusing time in a normal year, never mind during a global pandemic. You can download each podcast from Independent.ie, Spotify, SoundCloud, or wherever you get your podcasts from. And there'll be insights uh, and wisdom for all, whether you're a student, parent, or education specialist. Now, up first, with the long-awaited Leaving Cert results out on Monday, everybody has some level of anxiety about how it'll all work and what to expect. I'm delighted to be joined by three guests today. Catherine Donnelly is Education Editor of the Irish Independent, and she's going to give us a view on what's going to happen this week. Reuben Murray is a Leaving Cert student uh, and also President of the Irish Second Level Students' Union, and Dr. Porrick Walsh is CAO of the Quality and Qualifications Ireland. And you're all very welcome along today. Now, let me start with you, Reuben. Tell us a little bit about how this year has been for you and how you're feeling ahead of Monday's results. Well, let's be honest, it's been a very unusual year for all Leaving Cert students. It's been very surreal, the actual ending of school. It's all been very abstract. It's been through online. We quite literally walked out of school one day. They said, we'll be back in maybe two or three weeks. And that has been the end of it. There hasn't been that closure. So in a lot of cases, it feels like we haven't necessarily left school. That hasn't quite hit students yet. In relation to the feeling ahead of Monday, well, every year there's anxiety surrounding the Leaving Certificate grades. This year, even more so. It's a completely new process. The information released by the department yesterday explaining the breakdown of the grades, that has brought a lot more clarity and I think a lot more calm to the system, especially after what happened in the UK. Making sure that there were these reassurance brought out has reassured students and that's the important thing. Students are excited to move on to the next part of their lives. They want to move on to college, they want to move on to work. And at this point in time, they're eager to get their grades and to move on. This has been a very stressful year with the complete uncertainty as to what would happen with the Leaving Cert, if it would be in person, if we'd be calculated grades. It's all been moving very fast and has been a stressful time, but it's now starting, we're, starting, we're in the home stretch and it's starting to be a point where we can start to see the end and people can move on to the next stages of their lives, which is a positive. Good. Yes. And indeed, of course, all students will be anxious to get going on that. Catherine uh, Donnelly, just tell us a little bit about what's going to be happen this year that's different from normal years. Well, what will happen this year on Monday, when the students get the uh, results on Monday, they will get those results by logging on to um, uh, a, a, a website that they're familiar with. Uh, schools will also have the results. And if they need to contact their school, to talk to the school, the school will, will make themselves available to them. Um, that's the main sort of what the, one of the differences is, I suppose, really that they're not automatically maybe going into school. That's that is that would be different for, for some students because of the, the conditions under which schools have reopened, the social distancing constraints. Um, schools may not be able to accommodate leaving search the, the last year's leaving search candidate in the way they normally do. Big congregations of them coming in to collect the results together. So that will be one change on Monday. But the schools are being asked to support students and they are being asked to, um, where possible, maybe to bring them in on a scheduled appointment because there will be students who will need a a lot of support. And uh, so maybe bring them in on a scheduled appointment or talk to them over the phone. So, but but, but as I say, the families who are used to seeing kids heading off to school on results day will find find that uh, a a bit different this year. And tell us a little bit about how the calculator grades will work. Now, we've, we've saw kind of how not to do it via the UK and we're assured uh, somewhat that we're using a different algorithm, a different model. Do you anticipate it'll be a cleaner and, and more acceptable uh, way to do um, results? Well, I think after, after what we were told this week by the minister, I think it'll, it'll be more acceptable and cleaner than perhaps it might have been. Uh, had they gone with the model that they were talking about all summer. I think what happened in the UK uh, certainly uh, concentrated minds in Ireland. So what happened this week was they removed uh, one controversial measure from the method of calculating the grades, and that is looking at the the performance of a school in the Leaving Cert over the previous three years. And that was seen to 
um, potentially disadvantage um, further uh, students in schools in the DESH uh, scheme. And there was a serious concern about that because uh, those students don't need to, uh, any f further disadvantage than they may already have. So that's what caused the problem in the UK. They have removed that measure. They could already tell us this week that by removing that, that it was fairer to those students. And overall, we do know overall on Monday, 83% of students will get um, a grade that's, that reflects either the mark the teacher gave them or something higher. So that's, you know, 83% of, you know, so of grades uh, will be at that level. Obviously, 17% won't. But I suppose any student going in to sit an exam uh, doesn't necessarily end up with the results that they hope for when they, when they, when they go in to sit the exam. So, uh, we, but we just have to see how that plays out. Okay. Dr. Porik Walsh is with us uh, also of QQI. Uh, Porik, tell us a little bit about, uh, we, we heard that some extra courses are being laid on across many subjects and, you know, we know how uh, competitive uh, and, and restrictive the points system is. Uh, what will that mean for points for individual courses? Are they likely to go down in some and up in others? I think the first thing to remember is that points go up and down every year. And students are familiar with that. You can't exactly predict what the uh, points for a particular programme will be because it depends on supply and demand. Obviously, the high demand courses are high every year, the ones in medicine, veterinary, those that remain high year, year to year. If the, uh, the, the scores of students go up and the demand remains the same, then the points go up. I mean, that's, that's the challenge, unless there are more places. And that's the advantage, I think, of the fact that the minister has announced an additional 1,250 places, and the hope is that they will be at institutional level in programmes in high demand. So if you like, that takes some of the, the heat out of the system. But if everybody's scores go up, uh, then your relative place will remain the same. So it's still, it's still difficult to get into the high points programme. But by adding uh, more places, uh, the, the demand can be satisfied to some extent. This year's crop of students aren't just uh, kind of fighting for places with themselves. There's also a bunch of repeats coming in from last year. And I'm just wondering, should we be feeling extra sorry for them if the points now are going to uh, kind of change uh, in a way that maybe they hadn't expected? Pork, what do you think will, hap will happen for people who maybe had been five or, or ten points off their course and are now coming into this system? Well, I mean, the challenge really has to do with the comparison between this year and last year. I mean, we've heard a lot of talk about the term uh, standardisation. And obviously, the idea is that for a large cohort of students, say 60,000 students who sit the Leaving Cert, you wouldn't expect to get huge variation from year to year in, in the quality of the overall performance of that large, of that large uh, group. So there is a standardisation element that's built into the Leaving Cert. So, for instance, in 2019, about 13% of students scored 500 points or greater. In 2018, that was also 13%. In 2017, it was about 12.5%. So year on year, the if you like, the, the points are roughly equivalent. The difficulty is that if, as we've heard this year, that there is an increase in scores uh, between with the, the calculated grades, the students from last year really are competing against a group that might have received higher scores than, than they would have got in a normal year. And, but it's very hard to see how there was any other way of doing that. So, I mean, I think there is a challenge uh, for that group in that they don't, they haven't had the opportunity, they're competing, if you like, under the old rules. So, uh, I mean, that, that will be a challenge. Now, Catherine, uh, there were some reports at the beginning when the year went into lockdown, all the schools closed, that when we realised Leaving Cert was going to be terribly different this year, there was cries of, oh, my teacher hates me and, and won't be giving me increased grades. But in fact, the opposite seems to have happened. Teachers have been reporting or, or offering uh, much higher results, a doubling in some cases of the H1 grades. How is, why do you think that happened? And what do you think is, how will that be managed from here on in? Well, I suppose, yeah, as you say, this had never happened before. So the teachers were just as nervous as the Leaving Cert students about how this was going to play out. And they didn't want to be, certainly didn't want to be seen to be unfair to any student. That was, I think was the, most, the overriding concern in the minds of teachers that at the end of the day, that they would be seen to have been fair. 
So, and the, the, I mean, the guidance of the teachers was to look at the student in the subject and see what, you know, if they had sat the exam under normal conditions in June, what might they have expected to get? And that, in doing that, they were to look at how the students, you know, the students' general performance and maybe looking at the Christmas exams, the mocks, and, but, but if, the, if the mock result was a little bit lower than the teacher expected of them, well, then they were to take that into account. And if the mock gave them a H3 and the teacher felt that really they were worthy of a H2 or a H1, well, then the teacher uh, was asked to, to um, use their discretion and to do that, you know, and, and to give the, the student, you know, a very fair chance. So it looks like they certainly did that. But the net result was that um, in, some, in many subjects, apparently, there's, there's been a double, there was a doubling of the number of H1s, and in some subjects, there was a tripling. So clearly, that, you know, that sort of uncontrolled growth was something that um, you wouldn't have expected in a normal year. So um, obviously, they, there, were, there, there were other measures that had to be taken into account. So for instance, one of the measures that the department did, did use and is continuing to use is looking back on this class, the, the Leaving Cert class of 2020, looking back on their junior cert results. And they can do that. And even if a student moves school, they, can, um, they could track that student. So if, if an unusually high number of H1s um, came in from somewhere, they could look back on that, the, the junior cert results of that class um, two or three years ago, and they could see, they could compare. And the, the junior cert is actually quite a good predictor of how you're going to do in the Leaving Cert. So if that class was, you know, on average was, you know, was producing H3s, H4s, or, or the equivalent of H, you know, the, it, would, it would be the AB system in, in junior search, ABC. But if, if, you know, the range of marks tended to be, say, from, you know, 40% to 80%, uh, and then in the leaving search, the, the, the leaving search results sent in for that class were from 70% to 100%, well, then the, the alarm bells would have gone off. And so, they're the sort of, of checks and balances that, that they applied. Sure. Uh, Ruben, can I ask you, um, junior cert, your mocks, are you confident now ahead of Monday that they'll be reflected properly or are you the last minute crammer that was hoping for a rush up to, up to June? Well, it's very important. Everyone has different kinds of uh, study skills. I would have been someone I would have done a lot of work uh, on the sides every now and again, though my, a lot of my time would have been in that last month coming up where I would have done in-depth high concentration of study uh, that's so if if you call that cramming but um i think it's very important to realize where there was that large excess of h1s and h2s that was why the national standardization process was so important because it's very important that i give the grades that uh standing that in 10 years time when someone looks at a 2020 leaving cert and a 2019 leaving cert or a 2025 leaving cert that they're all given the same value Porik, um, people now, of course, with, hand in hand with the Leaving Search results go the CAO, which we'll be covering in a later podcast. How can students find out more about their college course? What's happening on campus? How it's going to be different um, for, for, from previous intakes? Uh, I mean, like everything else, this is uh, a movable feast. I think people recognise if, you, if you've gone back and said, well, you know, what will uh, what will life be like a month ago? You might get a different answer from now. So, for instance, we had the situation where Kildare was locked down. Well, Kildare contains the new university. So the answers that the colleges can give this week might have differed from, from what they did a couple of weeks ago. And I think for that, I think that the, the colleges and the students need some level of forbearance in terms of the certainty uh, that people can, can give. Obviously, the institutions want to be able to tell the students what percentage of their time they will uh, be expecting to have in class and, and how much work will be uh, online. But that really depends on what the, what the, the prevailing uh, conditions are that are in that. I know on the student side, the real challenge is, is there enough going to take place on campus that it makes it worth my while, for instance, moving and taking uh, accommodation around that? And I think what has happened in the last number of days is some of the colleges, Waterford Institute of Technology, for instance, has said that all of the lectures are going to be online. Obviously, for practical elements, you have to have those in class. So I think the most important thing really is that the uh, colleges uh, keep good contact uh, with, with the students. That will be for, for uh, students that are returning. But for obviously new students, it's in terms of the information that they can provide them. Uh, really in terms of the type of, uh, of, of uh, 
college, uh, the expectation that a student can, can have uh, coming in. And that, that leads to some extent on, on on the prevailing community. Okay, well, while, you're, while you mentioned WIT there, Porik, actually, you know, they also announced that in moving their entire courses online, they're going to be charging the same student contribution. Do you think that's fair for colleges to do that? I know they're struggling for funds, but that's not the student's problem. And, you know, if others follow suit and, and don't recognise that there is a significant difference, maybe they're due a refund. Uh, that's a very obvious question that people will have. I think, unfortunately, it, uh, it gives to the idea that providing uh, programs online are cheaper. That, in fact, isn't the case. I can assure you, as a, an academic of long standing, uh, before I took this job, that it's an awful lot easier to use your notes from the previous year and to give your lectures in the same particular way than it is to completely change the way that you're running your programs. And I think the thing that people have to remember is that we locked down this year in mid-March. Mid-March is, is almost three quarters way through the academic year. A lot of programs, practicals, projects were finished at that stage. What, what academics and the institutions are now looking at is offering a completely new program for next year. And that actually costs a lot more money to run. I know the student may feel that uh, they're not getting the same experience on, on campus, but in fact, running uh, e-learning, uh, running those types of programs costs, costs more money for the, for the and, and then of course, most of the cost is locked up uh, in, in pay anyway. So it isn't cheaper to, to run a college, but I can certainly understand uh, how the student can feel, could possibly feel shortchanged by things. Indeed. All right. Um, Catherine, what would make Monday a good day out for Education Minister Norma Foley? Well, I mean, it's, all, it's, a, it's, it's, it's always a fraught day for, for somebody. Um, I suppose what would make it a good day out is, I suppose, if, if as few students as possible are, are disappointed, and bearing in mind that Every year, students are disappointed, but this year, obviously, they have something. They have something to blame, and and that's they may choose to blame the minister. But I mean, the reality is, every year, students are disappointed. I suppose the most important thing for students to remember is that results day is only the start of a week or a fortnight or a process that may go on for a few weeks. They shouldn't prejudge what's going to happen later in the week. CAO offers come out on Friday. Um, and they may get their offers, they may get the offer they want. On Monday, they might worry whether they're going to get it. On Friday, they'll see that they had nothing to worry about. And that's what happens all the time. So I suppose that's, um, yeah, Monday is maybe a little bit early in the, in the season to be deciding whether uh, people sh should be worried or not, or, or to what extent they should, they, they should be concerned. Okay, all right. And Ruben, your plans for the year uh, from Monday onwards? So uh, my plans for the year, uh, since I was elected president of the ISSU, I've decided to take a gap year. So I'll be deferring my college place. I hope to uh, go to study political science and government in Cork uh, next year, hopefully. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for on this podcast. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I'd like to thank my guests, Catherine Donnelly, Reuben Murray and Dr. Porrick Walsh for their expertise. And Reuben, the very best of luck on Monday and all that college life brings when you get there. We're available on independent.ie, Spotify, SoundCloud or wherever you get your podcasts from. And don't forget, from Monday, the National Parents Council helpline in conjunction with the Department of Education and independent.ie will be setting up a helpline for any student who wants to get in touch, that's a one-to-one -one service and it'll be running right through until Saturday the 12th. The number for that is 1800 265 165. Now join us next time on Friday, 11th of September, otherwise known as CAO Offers Day. The Going to College Education Podcast from the Irish Independent in association with Quality and Qualifications Ireland, QQI, promoting quality and accountability in Irish education and training. 